all of this training and using large AI models can definitely have an impact on the environmental resources, such as water, such as electricity. People don't talk about it. We're going to take a look at how much data centers consume, how much the compute power is actually putting a pressure point on the whole environmental discussion. And also, I want to point out that right now, companies aren't thinking of that. They're not thinking about the ramifications that their AI program is going to have on the environment. They're not thinking about that at all. Right now, companies are competing to stay relevant. Whatever AI they had in the background behind the curtains helping power things, ever since ChatGPT and OpenAI and all that buzz and success, every single company has just been slinging their products and deploying it on the public and dealing with the ramifications and consequences later. It's a very high risk environment right now as far as the technology that they're putting out. And because there's not much safety or regulation or any of those types of laws or policies in place, a lot of companies are just rolling the dice. It's the wild, wild west in the area of AI. So let's take a look at how artificial intelligence is actually affecting the environment. So if you don't already know, data centers are really the things that power AI, right? The energy use. Training these models requires substantial computational power, which is housed and used in these data centers. And data centers like Google, they use a lot of cooling that includes water. So a significant portion of the water consumption associated with AI comes from cooling these data centers. High performance servers generate a lot of heat and to maintain optimal operating temperatures and prevent overheating, cooling systems are essential. There are various cooling methods, but many data centers rely on water cooled systems. These systems use water to absorb heat from the servers and then dissipate it away from the equipment, sometimes through evaporation in cooling towers. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to cover some efforts that are being worked on or some theories on how to reduce water usage. But what I want to show you right now is some of the alarming stats with regard to big tech's water consumption. So if you see here by the Financial Times, the article here is called AI Boom Sparks Concern Over Big Tech's Water Consumption. And if we take a look here, it seems like the latest data they have is from 2022. And it says that Microsoft increased its water consumption by 34%, Google 22%, and Meta 3% as a result of their growing use of data centers. Now, these data centers in 2022, they weren't even using so much of the compute power for AI as they are right now. And artificial intelligence is actually utilizing a ridiculous amount of compute power, which is important because remember, these companies are now competing. For instance, Microsoft Bing is using ChatGPT. Google is combating that by having Gemini, and they also have huge investments in Claude's Anthropic, right? Anthropic's Claude or whatever. And if you take a look at this article by Forbes, which says AI is accelerating the loss of our scarcest natural resource, water, it says here that tech giants have significantly increased their water needs for cooling data centers due to the escalating demand for online services and generative AI products. AI server cooling consumes significant water with data centers using cooling towers and air mechanisms to dissipate heat, causing up to nine liters of water to evaporate per KWH of energy used. For those that don't know, KWH stands for a kilowatt hour, which is a unit of energy commonly used to measure electricity consumption. It represents the amount of energy used by a device that operates at a power of one kilowatt for one hour. And if we take a look at this article by earth.org, which I almost didn't want to read because I saw that they spelled fulfill incorrectly. And then when I actually Googled it, it turns out that you can actually spell fulfill with just one L instead of two L's as a verb, which is really interesting to me. I actually did not know that. So here the article states the green dilemma. Can AI fulfill its potential without harming the environment? 
It says here that as data sets and models become more complex, the energy needed to train and run AI models becomes enormous. This increase in energy use directly affects greenhouse gas emissions, aggravating climate change. According to OpenAI researchers, since 2012, the amount of computing power required to train cutting-edge AI models has doubled every 3.4 months. By 2040, it is expected that the emissions from the information and communications technology industry as a whole will reach 14% of the global emissions, which I think currently it's only a couple of percentage points. With the majority of those emissions coming from the ICT infrastructure, particularly data centers and communication networks. This all demonstrates the urgent need to address AI's carbon footprint and role in environmental deterioration. It also says that recently a study was conducted by researchers at the University of Massachusetts to determine how much energy is used to train certain popular large AI models. According to the results, training can produce about 626,000 pounds of carbon dioxide or the equivalent of around 300 round-trip flights between New York and San Francisco, nearly five times the lifetime emission of the average car. And finally, I'll read you a snippet from The Verge, where the title of the article is The Environmental Impact of the AI Revolution is Starting to Come into Focus. It says here that if every search on Google used AI similar to ChatGPT, it might burn through as much electricity annually as the country of Ireland. Why is that? Because adding generative AI to Google search increases its energy use more than tenfold, according to a new analysis. Now, again, I want to be mindful of scaring the bejesus out of you guys, because a lot of times when it comes especially to the environment, I remember all of the estimates that were there about a decade ago, scaring everyone, saying that all the polar ice caps are going to melt if everyone remembers the whole Al Gore era. So when it comes to actual research on the environment, environment and the environmental impact, greenhouse gases, all that stuff, I typically have a little bit of a skeptical outlook. But now that I have focused on some negatives, let's discuss some positives. So some of the ways that this burden on environmental resources can potentially be resolved. I try my best to be objective, but I'm an optimist at heart. And so for me, I want to discuss some of the ways that potentially in the future, the whole environmental strain is not going to be an issue. So for one, one of the ways that AI can actually curtail the whole environmental problem is by having more advanced cooling technology. So maybe more efficient ways like ambient air cooling in cooler climates. Have we ever thought about the fact that pretty much everywhere where technology is advancing, at least in the States, like Silicon Valley and such, if you think of Texas or even Arizona, why are a lot of these data centers and why are a lot of these companies based in really, really hot climates? Probably because the people want to be there, right? They want to work in an environment where it's sunny and all that other jazz. But there's a lot of pockets of America that are very accessible, that are cooler climates, and that would very likely probably be even cheaper than housing something in Texas or Arizona or California, right? And so some of these colder climate states, this is something that potentially data centers will be built out there more. The other aspect that I like to think about is renewable energy sources. There are energy sources that have a lower water footprint than thermoelectric power, right? And this is stuff that Elon Musk talks about all the time, even like nuclear power plants, which people frown upon. But who knows if the safety of that is actually going to be pretty good in the future. And potentially we could be using that to power some of these data centers. Also, with technological advancement always comes more efficiency, right? So just because these AI models are using a tremendous amount of compute power now doesn't mean that there's not going to be more efficient algorithms and more efficient hardware that requires a lot less compute power coming in the near future. So 
I am not someone that's just like, AI is scary, it's the end of the world, it's the worst thing that happened to the world since you know the creation of nuclear bombs. I don't believe that. I'm actually an optimist. I think that AI is gonna solve a lot of problems. I think it's gonna help people be more efficient, potentially even more employable, because we can use the tool of AI as a tool to make us even better, right? Even more employable. So obviously there's a yin and yang to everything, but I hope you found this video to be interesting. This is a topic that not a lot of people are talking about in the field of AI. And so I'm curious, would you like me to do more research on this aspect of artificial intelligence? Is there another topic that you want me to cover? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section, and I will see all of you in the next video. Thank you.